So apparently there was a port strike right here in the United States of America, 2024. How long did it last? Uh, two, three, four days. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Let's read into it. It's over now. It ended yesterday. It says Friday the 4th. It ended Thursday the 3rd. But let's look into it. I hope you got plenty of your little toilet paper. Y'all been stocking up on some toilet paper and paper towels because you thought the world was going to go crazy. Go ahead and thumbs up this video, guys. Let's go ahead and read a little bit about this port strike. Let me get my, let me get my guy over there. All right, so we got some stuff pulled up here. Port strike, so it's over. Strike, striking port work return to work Friday as negotiate negotiators reach an agreement. So that's some headlines. U.S. port reopens after dock workers in strike. So port strike, longshoreman union boss linked to. Whoa, let's not read that. I don't know what that's about. The port strike is over. Here's what happened next. So they wanted. So they got. They wanted like seventy-seven percent increase over six years. They were offered like 50 something percent, and then now they set around 62 percent. So that is this year six dollars, next year five dollars, year after that four dollars, year after that three dollars, and two dollars. How would you like to get a six dollar raise this year and then a five dollar raise next year? It's eleven dollars in two years, guys. That's actually a lot of money, but I mean, they did they did work long, long hours. I would like to get that kind of raise. Um, we're just glad it's over until January after the big election, big election, 2024. So that's that. Let's move on to more important stuff, the stock market. Did the port strike mess up the stock market? I'm going to say no. Some people might say it have long-term effects on it because there's 54 uh, container ships or whatever, 54 container ships queued outside the ports. It's going to cost more money stuff's going to take longer to get there who knows let's go let's go look and see if the stock market is overvalued right now so market watch says anyway you look at it the stock market is dangerously overvalued now this is a month ago and stocks have continued to go up since then we don't need that advertisement so the U.S. stock market today is almost as overvalued as it was at the top of January 3rd, 2022. If you remember January 3rd, it was way up there. And then all 22 just kept coming down and down and down. So comparing current valuation with the prevailed, with what prevailed at previous market tops is important whenever the market recovers from a correction and reaches a new all-time high. Investors can hope that the correction or bear market will have worked off some of the excess Oh, excuse me. I'm going to edit that out. Excesses that prevailed previously and provide a foundation to support a significant new leg of the bull. Okay, so let's look at this chart. So this chart. So orange is 2022 at 100%. And then everything kept cra come crashing down. Not crashing, but uh, dropping pretty good all of 2022. Blue is where we currently are at the end of August. We're now at the end, beginning of October. So, as you can see here, that's way above it. Uh, oh, here we go. So, right here, Q ratio, it's way above where it's in 22. Everything else is almost to the same levels. The market's come up since this little this little article came out. Market came up a little bit. And it's still climbing. But I don't know if it's going to climb all through the rest of the year. It might drop down quite a bit in November, depending on, uh, you know, who gets it. And uh, if one person gets it, it might spike up pretty good, which is going to actually be kind of bad, I think, for the market because it's. I think everything is overvalued right now. I'm still dollar cost averaging because you're supposed to for the long run. Um, so that's the uh, market rot, market watch. Well, actually, hold on. Let's pause. Let's pause. So there's another reason that overvaluation doesn't do the market immediately is that valuation has relatively little predictive power at shorter term horizons. But each of the indicators featured in this chart has an impressive record forecasting the stock market's return over the subsequent decade. There are forecasting returns between now and 2034 that are below inflation. How valuation models now compare to the past? The percentiles plotted in the chart above are based on the distribution of monthly returns over a relatively short 
period of the U.S. market history, just since 2000. So if we extend our uh, horizon further back than the last two decades, the stock market appears to be even more overvalued. The chart below reports for each indicator. The percentile that its current reading represents relative to all monthly readings since 1970 and also since 1950. Any way you look at it, the stock market is dangerously overvalued. And here's the chart they were discussing. Overvalued. 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 So, anyway, I'm going to continue putting in my... Putting in my dollar cost average, dollar cost average to the market, like, like you're supposed to, like a good little weekly investor for the long haul. Let's see what Dow Jones looks like right now. It's a five year, oh, let me get my guy. It's a five year chart. Five year chart here. You can see how much it's climbed in five years. It went from 20, October 4th, 2019, it was 26,500, and now it's 42,184. That is a huge increase in five years, guys. That's a lot of, lot of dough right there. All right, so dollar cost averaging, here we are. Let's dollar cost average into this bad boy. I'm pause this real quick so I can get my screen set. All right, I got my little screen set up over here, guys. So I can pull up some stocks. Where are we at? We got $92,434. Total assets, total market value, $96,000. I'm down $3,600 because I bought some stuff on margin. I shouldn't have. I've been throwing another $1,000 a week at it. So what is up? What do we need to buy today? We always buy something every week. So we need to buy 34. Do we need to buy 34? Are we going to buy 30? Are we going to buy 30 shares of Ford? Let's buy 30 shares of Ford real quick, guys. Let's see what Ford's been doing. It's at $10.50. $10 Let's look here. Now, that was its big spike over here, January 10, 2022. And it's dropped since then. Up, down, up, down, up, down. It's really low right now. And the dividends. You know Ford always pays a good dividend. Good dividend here. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's pick up 30. We're going to pick up 30. We're, this is long haul investing right here. We're not, we're not day trading Ford stock. Buy 30. Not 130. Just 30. We're going to market. That's $315. Buy it. Place order. Bam, done. Right, let's go back. Let's go back, guys. Let's do some total market. I think we're going to get some uh, VTI. Vanguard total market. Let's click on it, see where we're at. So it's $281. And every all the places here have it right in the middle. Historical return above average. Historical risk above average. Right now, let's look at the five-year chart. Climbing. It's up 87% in five years. That's pretty good. Pretty good. That also means, another thing, might be overvalued. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. We'll find out when it comes crashing down, won't we, guys? When it comes crashing down. How many of these do I have? Hold on, let's go back one second. $21. I got VTI. I have six. Let's pick up four. Let's make it even 10. It only makes up 1.78% of my account. Pick up four. It's gonna cost me a thousand dollars, I think. Ew. Do I want to pick up four? No, I don't want to pick up four right now. I'm just gonna pick up one because I don't want to put another thousand dollars on it. Market, we're gonna buy one, take this from six to seven. Your two hundred eighty-one dollars. Close that down. Let's go back. Let's buy a couple more things. What should we buy? What is not overvalued? Everything's overvalued, but we still got to buy it so we can get our drip, our dividend. Get our dividend. Vanguard Growth ETF. Uh, let's be SPGP. I think the SPGP is down right now. What does SPGP do? I forgot. These some, uh, uh, it tracks some very important things. Look at that. Look at that climbing. 21%. Okay. 
Okay, let's keep going, keep going. Oil and gas exploration and production, as you can see there, has 8.4%. Communication equipment, semiconductors, that's why they're up. Passenger Airlines, look at all these wonderful things it's holding. So this is a dividend here, 1.38. Okay, has a dividend. Okay, let's buy some more of this. Let's buy some more of this wonderful dividend stock here. Let's go. SP 500 GARP ETF. $105.93. $105.93, guys. That's like saying $106. How many do we want to buy? Two. I'm going to make a purchase of two. Big money. Big money. That's $210. Bu $211. Bucks. $211.86, guys. Right there on the screen. We're going to review it. We're going to place order. Perfect. Ooh, Rick, that's a lot of stuff you bought today. You're going to be broke. You bought $800 worth of stuff. Do we want Walmart? Do we want a Walmart stock? Walmart makes up 3.35% of our value of our account. We want to get that number up to uh, 5%, but Coca-Cola has said it makes 5%. Let's see. Do I need to buy at those at work, APD, Air Products. Now let's buy FLQL. FLQL, Franklin US Large Cap. Let's see what this five years is about on FLQL, guys. Oh, yeah, 75%, five years, that's pretty good. Okay, we got expense ratio of 0 0.15. It's a little bit higher than what needs to be. A little bit higher than what needs to be. I think VOO is lower. Um, that's what they're holding. Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, Meta, Google. Avgo, MasterCard, Alphabet, Costco. That's what they're holding. And we got a little distribution. You know, it's not a dividend. It's a distribution. 1.12%. So, let's buy some. How much does it cost? It costs fifty-seven dollars and sixty-seven cents. So let's buy four. Make it around two hundred dollars. Make well, it should be two hundred twenty-eight dollars. Let's see. Buy four. Is four. Market two hundred thirty-one dollars. Oh, because it's sixty-seven. Yeah. Review it. Place order. There it is. So I think that's uh. Just dollar cost average into the market like we've always been doing guys nothing different here this is how the game is played let's go to accounts summary see where we're at okay so our three month change is up seventy five hundred dollars today change up 184 dollars my value is ninety two thousand so this is what i need to transfer from my bank account to this account to make it back uh even that's how much stuff I bought that I didn't have money for. But I'm going to transfer that within this next month. $1,000 a week. Okay. Now, let's show you all some what dollar cost averaging into the market is. So, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see that. So, if you put $100 a week, guys, $100 a week into the market. Let's say the S&P 500. All right. You do $100 a week here. 8%, 8% is kind of low. Let's do it for 35 years. So you're 25 years old. You start investing into a Roth IRA, $100 a week, S&P 500. This, we're going to be conservative, say 8%. It's probably like 9 or 10%. 35 years from 25 years old to 60 years old, right? And you contribute $100 a week. That's $5,200 a year, which is less than what you're even maximum allowed to contribute to a Roth IRA. I think the max is 6500 but if you just do $100 a week from the age of 25 to 60, that's 35 years, you'll have $1 million of tax-free. You could withdraw it tax-free out of your Roth, $1 million from the age of 25 years old to 60 years old, 35 years. Is that right? 25 plus 35 is 60? That's right. Initial balance, 5200 That's what you put in the first year. Oh, excuse me. So you earned $894,000 of interest. That's a lot of money. And you've only deposited 
181000 Your The money out of your account was $181,998.60, which you can't see that on the screen. There you can. And your total interest, $894,041.03 pennies. So compound rate, 8.3. So it's actually, let's say, it's not going to be 9 every year. It's just averaging 9, 10, maybe 11. So if it's if you average 9% for 35 years, you're at almost 1.4 million, $1,398,314.12. Your additional deposits are the exact same, guys. 10%. Are you going to, is S&P going to uh, compound 10%? 1.8 million 1.8 million so that's not realistic that you're gonna get 10% every year so let's just be conservative with ourselves here hundred dollars a week for 35 years millionaire tax-free pulled out of your Roth tax-free I'm not a financial advisor so not financial advice make sure you thumbs up my video guys all right I'm gonna go ahead and end it there I uh, appreciate you watching my channel I uh, appreciate you subscribing and liking. Please, in the comment section, uh, tell me what you got. Tell me what you think of my awesome video. Sure to appreciate it. Peace out, guys. Thanks for stopping by.